Hello Sharks, Sniz here, and today I'm joined by Kenny, or otherwise known as Thunderlord. He is the number 6 Thunderbreaker according to the first season of Punch King. He's also level 281 and has thankfully soloed Black Mage. Huh. Got anything that else to add? No, no, that's, that's about it. That's a good intro. Okay, well, we're starting at least. Uh, so I've brought him on today because per another Thunderbreaker's recommendation, Tomo, he has recommended that I try and have guests on these Shark Speaks because that's that would probably make it easier to talk, you know, have someone to bounce off of. So that's why I've brought Kenny on to be to be my assistant or kind of or guest. I don't know the terminology very well. Uh, I've brought him on specifically to talk about Thunderbreaker, though. Uh, we were just revealed the new mastery cores of uh, the new sixth job mastery cores in Korea, and Thunderbreaker received Thunderbolt as their new uh, skill. What is your opinion on what we've seen so far from that? It seems promising. Um, there's a lot of cool changes outside of Thunderbolt that's happening as well, like the Lightning Brand changes. Those seem really good. Um, the C wave especially looks really good because now we can reliably proc C wave for every uh, was it wave spawn? Yeah, mob spawn? spawn. Yeah, every mob spawn. Um, so that seems really promising. That opens up a lot of lazy rotations, but I don't know how relevant that will be with the new Soul Genis stuff coming out anyway. So maybe that stuff doesn't even really matter. Um, there, I know KMS. Thunderbreakers, I'm not really happy with it. Um, like this, the Thunderbolt changes itself seem pretty good, but they're pretty upset that Typhoon is probably not going to be used anymore. Um, it really depends on how the Lightning Brand stuff interacts with with Typhoon, especially during Primal Bolt. So there's a, there's just a lot of unknown stuff right now, but it does seem promising. Yeah, especially with the. For those that don't know, we get an additional Lightning Brand, or it's the same Lightning Brand. It just gets transferred into a big lightning strike during from what it seems like is when during certain skills are used so we get a larger hit it from my understanding of like the translation that we've received from orange mushroom it seems like during primal bolt that's when it is going to be triggering so it seems like for once in our lives as thunderbreakers we are kind of receiving it seems like they're trying to at least alleviate the problem with like typhoon falling off during burst or by giving bigger burst but it that also just poses like once we do get Typhoon mastery, that we should have proper burst for once. Like I'm not sure what to make of it myself. Yeah, I don't know. the tr The translation was really weird. Um, I think it was probably a mistranslation, but the way that it was worded uh, may imply that we may be weaving our Lightning Spear multi strike in the future, um, which has a few implications. It means that we probably can't fit all of our burst, or at least like a big burst into Fatal Strike anymore, and that may mean that Fatal Strike is no longer like the node for us, and we may be looking into Boss Slayer 2. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll have to do some testing when yeah. that comes out. Definitely have to do testing on the Boss Slayer versus Fatal Strike, because it's hard to see a two-minute cooldown, even if it is 10 seconds, being compared to, you know, a, a buff that is twice as powerful for two seconds every 30 seconds. It's just hard for me to see that not being more worthwhile. Yeah, but, who knows? Yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah, exactly. A lot of things re remain to be seen, but I guess that like translates back into where do you fall on the Thunderbreaker? Uh, what is it? The spectrum of Thunderbreakers. Are you more of a Copium user or a Doomer? I think that if you are somebody who is capable and has the resources to be pushing endgame content and trying to go for first clears, it's pretty bad to be a Thunderbreaker main. But I think that if you're like the casual mapler who isn't really doing that kind of stuff, then I think Thunderbreaker is fine to to main. Um, it's really just when you get near the end game um, where you really start to feel the the problems of the class. That is definitely a respectable opinion. I am definitely more of a doomer myself, being towards the end game as you stated. Uh, what do you speaking of that like the the copium and doomer? How do you feel like that? translates into uh bobbing so so to speak like you we are one of the more high effort mobbing classes um yeah i don't know that's a good question i mean i have found at least one lazy rotation in every major grandis area for the most part um so thunderbreaker does have lazy options and in fact like 
some of them there, there is one in at least uh was it shangri-la where like you're just dropping down farming um so in terms of mobbing like i i don't like how high effort it is a lot of the time but at the very least there are maps where you can't have lazier farming and the rates aren't even as like that bad compared to what optimal farming is um and in six months it really just won't matter because the soul Janna stuff is going to come out and uh everybody's just going to have lazy farming yeah that actually brings up like another question of like mobbing in general because like everyone's reaching peak rates now so like this is kind of like a side tangent but like what do you think of like them not addressing the overall well i feel like they're not addressing the overall problem but like the core issue seems to be like how much time we're spending grinding for like these levels, right? Do you see mm -hmm. it more that we they should have like lowered the curve so we're grinding for less time, or do you think like this approach to making it more AFKable is the correct path for how much time we're spending? Mm. I think I definitely think they should just look to reduce the amount of time that you need to spend grinding um, because. I mean, I don't know, it just feels really bad, right? Like, yeah, we'll have lazier grinding, but you still have to sit there and commit the time to, to leveling. And even though it's like less effort, like you're not really going to get that time back. So I would, I would really like to see them just move towards lower time requirements for, for leveling. And especially like, I, I really don't like the level system in Maple and how your level affects your damage to bosses and things like that like it feels really bad that me i'm at 281 if i want to start um pushing and calling or or above right i'm gonna have to spend a lot of time leveling yeah and even if the leveling becomes really lazy like that doesn't really change the fact that i still have to essentially like find time to to do the leveling and i get that it's a game and if you want to do end game content that's fine like you, you should put in the time but if you compare it to like every other mmo like there is no other well okay maybe i shouldn't say that but like a lot of the other popular mmos like you don't have to spend that much time leveling right um it's just a matter of getting good enough gear to to do those end game raids yeah um that's... whereas that's not the case here that's definitely true like i don't know like it feels like they're going towards more of a quote unquote brain rot era like they're trying to address the brain rot you might you might feel from doing these long grinds rather than looking at the what I feel is the core problem, which is like how much time is being invested to engage with like the core gameplay loop, which is like, you know, farm, you know, farm slash grind for your levels and your resources like meso, fragments, whatever that resource may be, spend it, go do the boss. But like that loop is very, that gameplay loop is really slanted right now uh, when it comes to like how much time you're putting into the precursor just before you can even boss. Yeah. It definitely sucks. I mean, like when I look at a game like RuneScape, RuneScape also has a lot of grinding to it, but a lot of the grinding in RuneScape can be done, um, I don't know, almost AFK, right? Like you're not really forced to stay there. And then like, especially in GMS, when you have worries of, of getting white roomed or people thinking like you're botting or, or whatever, like it's really hard to, uh, I don't I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, but I don't know. They, they really need to do something about how much time it takes to level. Yeah, I think the interactivity for leveling is like a is the big issue. I don't I also don't like you could even tie this back into like totems. I don't think totems were a solution for it. It was just like a band-aid kind of thing. Yeah. But like I know we're not in that timeline anymore, so it's not really relevant, so to speak. I guess to like try and bring this back towards like Thunderbreaker, we went on we went and talked about like the the amount of effort you have to put or the amount of time investment that we're putting towards our mobbing. I think that brings up the great question of what do you when do when do you think C Wave is going to be fixed? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Every single time they've told us that it's been fixed, it it actually hasn't. And I I don't know. It's I I I don't believe it's ever going to be fully fixed. If they haven't figured it out by now, I don't know if they're they're waiting because they they knew that Thunderbolt was coming out and it it would affect Sea Wave in that way. I'm not really sure, but I'm I'm kind of convinced that it's just never going to be fixed and it'll just be one of those long-standing bugs that the class has to deal with. Yeah, it could be except it's like actually detrimental to the class this time. Thunderbolt, yeah. you know, the the way back, you know, I think it was like 2 years ago now when we had the faster Thunderbolt, that was a long-standing bug too, but at least it was beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. This is just like, kind of like, nothing's gained. Like we're gaining nothing from this. We're only losing. 
right? And like, it's not. I don't know. It's it's such a minor part of the class that I don't really feel like they have any pressure to fix it either. Yeah. And there's so few people playing the class that like, if they never fix it, then who who really cares? Yeah, we're we're not vocal enough, or nor are we making yeah. enough noise about it. It's just kind of, it is what it is kind of situation. We like most Maple players, we come we become complacent with like bad changes or like bugs that exist in the game right like we can complain about them but again it's on them to make the decision to fix it like the crash off for instance mm -hmm. uh i do feel like sea wave sh i mean obviously i just want the game to function i just want a functional game you know i want to be able to play my class and be like wow i'm playing my class a lot to ask for yeah apparently apparently i guess on topic of playing classes do you have any opinions on like how much overlap or how similar it feels between Buck and Thunderbreaker? I have a lot of opinions on that. It's it's really a crime that I don't know. Like Thunderbreaker, one of the one of the core things of the class, identities of the class, right, is that it's meant to be the EPM class with a lot of tools for high uptime, right? Mm -hmm. And in theory, like, if you have the hands for it and you have the, the game knowledge, you should be able to pump out a lot of damage and stick on the boss, like, permanently, you know? Um, and they even give you a 45-second iframe in, you know, for emergency situations. Like, that's a low enough cooldown that you can use it reliably for most things. And then you have something like Buck, where they just do a lot more damage than we do. Um, they actually have party utility, right? At least with the Pirate's Banner. Yep. Uh, and Time Leap. And then they, you know, they, they don't have the iframe, but they, they kind of just, they have all of the tools that Thunderbreaker does, except I guess they can't dash backwards while attacking. Yeah, um, I mean, that's very minute, though, I feel. Yeah, I, it just feels like Buck is, is just a better Thunderbreaker in just about every way, except they don't have an on-demand iframe, but they have the, what is it, the defense stance yeah, thing? Yeah, it reduces that, every, it's up 75% yeah. of the time and reduces damage by 25%. Yeah, what well, they're they're more mobile than Thunderbreaker. They have just as much control, if not more, on the ground, right? Because mm -hmm. of their dash and duck cancel, and then they have air stall as well. Um, they have good burst as well as well as a mini burst. I mean, I don't know. Like, there's there's really no reason to be picking Thunderbreaker over Buck um, in terms of like, I guess just pure gameplay, right? The only reason why you pick Thunderbreaker is because you liked it more. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like I've. <laughs> It's kind of hard to like, like I mentioned it at the beginning, like this Doomer versus Copium users for like Thunderbreaker mains, right? And like, mm -hmm. I feel like there's a, for like, when, the closer you get to the end game, the more and more you feel the inferiority complex associated with Thunderbreaker compared to Buck. Like, right. at least, at least in my experience, like it's like, I, even when like we had old Thunderbreakers, like old, like way back in the day, like Flarbs and the old number one, like the old top dogs, like uh, Whale was another one with an accent on the, like the original 250 Thunderbreakers. Like when they were around, like they were like, yeah, if I could swap to Buck, I would. And Buck wasn't even like the top of the top class back then. It just had Lord of the Deep really. Right. Yeah, I don't know. We got, we really got shafted with Ignition. <laughs> um, we essentially got... We what was it? Destiny was when we got the the attack speed changes, right? And where, Thunder where and Tidal Crash. Yeah, and then we got C Wave. Yep. Which doesn't even work. There was well. a oh um. my god, that sounds so bad. It's <laughs> yeah, the truth I mean, of the matter, but it is so bad. Like you could argue about the quality of life features that they added, but yeah, it's so so minute. Yeah, it really sucks. Um, and what was it? I mean, like it's nice that we have speed and fusion, I guess, but man, like they. Buck, Buck is just better in every way, and they have party support. Oh my gosh, and you mentioned party support, and like that is like a key criticism I have of the class, because like I don't see them changing off of two minutes, and that's fine. They can keep us as a two minute class. I just wish we were a stronger two minute class so we could meld with the three minutes better. Like, you know, a hero can compete in a three minute class for a, spot, for a DPS slot. Like they do, they're strong enough, even on a two minute cooldown. We're not. Art yeah, Arc as well. Yeah, Arc as well. There, there's a, there are significant classes that can do that, right? And those mm -hmm. classes also supply some amount of party support. Thunderbreaker right. has SI, Speed Infusion. There's Which, I can yeah. <laughs> I can count on less than on one hand how many classes benefit from that because they use a different IA because they don't benefit from attack speed that much. Right. Like, it's ridiculous. So keeping that in mind, I have an idea of what I would like to see party support wise. What would you like to see party support wise? 
there are some ideas that have been thrown around in the past, right? Like some people want to have speed, our speed infusion give some sort of damage buff. I think that's really boring. Um, Cascade seems really fun. Like if Cascade was somehow nerfed and, and turned into a party buff, I think that would solve a lot of our problems. I think another cool idea could be uh, could be with Primal Bolt, where um, so for for those who don't know, with, when Primal Bolt is active, as Thunderbreaker is comboing and linking their skills, their cooldowns get reduced. Not all the cooldowns, but certain skills get get their cooldowns reduced uh, as you link. So I think that could be a fun mechanic to introduce into party play. Um, I think, yeah, so for me, I, I would either like to see Cascade be turned into a party buff or have Primable interact with party's cooldowns in some way. Yeah, I, I think, think that's, I think that's ones. both. Yeah. Like, it's such a weak, like, the cooldown would be cool, but, like, there's, like, there's so many, like, minute things to that because, like, then they have to address, like, which skills can be cooldown reduced and what's the maximum reduction they can receive, which classes are going to actually benefit from it, too, right? Like, as far as I'm yeah. aware, like... It does reduce our it does reduce some fifth job skills for Thunderbreaker. Like, would it reduce like you know DOT Punisher on Fire Poison? Would it so would suddenly like Fire Poison and Thunderbreaker prim Primal Bolt like be insane? But like, I I don't know to what extent it would work. Yeah, it would probably require a lot of thought and planning. And honestly, it, it might only sound good in theory, but yeah. in practice, it might not be balanceable. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say like making Cascade into a party buff is probably like the best choice. I think so too, especially since like it's there are party buffs that give final damage already. You know, like we mm -hmm. have domain, we have benediction. Like Cascade giving final damage when you're near a Thunderbreaker doesn't sound that ridiculous. Especially yeah, and honestly, only... like it, if we if we could somehow give the lightning charges as well, like it like Cascade doesn't even have to give that much final damage. It could just honestly be like five percent and then have the extra bolts that apply every three seconds or whatever. Like that would be a lot already. That's true. That's how kinda like how pallies work. They can only link to one partner, but that's already ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like the the amount of extra attacks that come out from a paladin, like being in a duo is literally like I feel like it's like 40% extra final damage or some shit, even though the shadow partner is only 70%, just due to like which skills it copies. Ooh, I could be wrong, you know though. What, you know what would be kind of fun? Um, if we had some sort of way to let other people proc our lightning brands as well. Oh, for the new Annihilate Mastery that we have currently? Yeah, because then, what was it? That would reward the Thunderbreaker for having high uptime, right? Yeah. Because as they continue to hit the boss, other people can proc the brands. And yeah, that that could be a fun thing too, actually. I I, I see that too. Except like the brands are ki currently designed to pop every other attack. Like literally, it's annihilate applies it, thunderbolt activates it, annihilate yeah, applies it, typhoon change. pops it. You know, mm -hmm. so you'd mm -hmm. have to have like the brand like last a certain amount of attacks for that to like really be a feature that could be implemented. My personal sure. opinion has always been the sickness knights are you know masters of elements, right? Mm -hmm. Uh. My, my biggest gripe with Dawn Warrior uh, is that it gets to apply elemental reduction to bosses as a party buff. For those that are unaware, elemental resistance reduction is a very rare stat. You Most classes only get it through Insight, which is 5% final damage when, when you have level 100 Insight, and that is normally the only source you get. If you are a mage, however, excluding Beast Tamer, I believe, and probably Kana, because they're non-KMS and thus are not viable classes, uh, I'll, st I'll get on that soapbox too. Uh, you will have an extra source of elemental resistance reduction. Dawn Warrior is the only non-mage class that has access to it, and it gets to apply it as a party debuff. The only reason I am I am big on Thunderbreaker getting it as a party debuff is because Blaze Wizard also gets the ability to apply it as a party debuff. I think all the Sickness Knights should have just had access to elemental resistance reduction. Hmm. I. It's hard to to disagree, I guess, just because of the things that you said. But I really hate the idea of a final da uh, final damage stacking. It's just really boring. It um, is very boring. And it's really weird when people call it support because, like, it's not support. It's just it's just damage buffs. Yeah, there's no utility um, attached. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, like, one one thing I'd like to really see MapleStory explore is having these these damage things be tied to the player's skill in some way. Um, I don't really know, like, the, the Lightning Brand thing that I was talking about, right, where, like, 
the the effectiveness from it comes from how much uh, how much uptime the Thunderbreaker has. I think if final damage buffs were tied to that instead of just being a button that you press and then everybody gets a lot of damage, I think that would make the game a lot more healthy for one. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it would just make the game more fun in general too. I think so. Interactivity in boss fights has been something that they've been addressing for a while. I mean, bosses are always scuffed upon first release. Look at Kalos on release. God, that was a that was a mm. trash fire. But they're they're fun to progress. But yeah, I get what you mean by like per, like interactivity with bosses and like how like these support skills are not utility in any way, shape, or form. They're just final. They're extra damage buffs. Mm -hmm. And just like they they just vary in how long they apply or where they apply, kind of thing. Right. I guess within right. the scope of what we're used to, I think uh, another source of final damage reduction or elemental resistance reduction for Thunderbreaker would make sense. But in like the grand scheme of things of like a perfect perfect maple world, it would be way more entertaining to see something that in, in that interacted with a player's skill level, like how well they can keep up DPS, for instance, like right. you mentioned. Right. I think that ties kind of perfectly into like the next topic I wanted to cover with my next guest is how overtuned Bishop is. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining me, Kenny. Thunderbreakers will be Thunderbreakers, I guess. Yep. There we go. Bye-bye, <laughs> sharks. <laughs>